Hello, how are y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at this little 2000 Chevrolet S10 Blazer. Now guys, normally I'm working on cars that have been to shop to shop to shop, but this little Blazer is a very, very close friend of mine, but he lives in a town, Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is about 60 miles from here. So he took it to his mechanic, because the check engine light was on, and his mechanic looked at it and it was setting a mass air sensor code, so they put a new mass air sensor on it. So Tony went and got it, and he said in two, within two days the check engine light was back on, so he took it back to the shop. The shop put another new mass air sensor on it, and he said in two days the light was back on, so it, apparently it's an intermittent light that's setting. He took it back to the shop again, and now they want to put a PCM in it. And he, Tony called me and said, what do I think? And I said, hold on, dude. No, no, no more. Bring it down and let me diagnose it. We're not going to hang parts on this thing. We can't just wag a PCM and two mass errors. And I guess the shop told him, well, the first mass error, the second mass error, and the third, it can't be the mass error sensor because we've had three of them on it. Well, you know, that's ridiculous, guys. How did they diagnose the car? So let's take a look at how we would diagnose a car like this if it came into your shop. First thing I want to do is get a scan tool on it. So let's get that done. Okay, guys, I got the scan tool connected. So let's go ahead and look at the DTCs. Okay, so I got a P0102 mass air sensor has low flow. Okay, that's the code, and that's just like what Tony said he was having problems with, and we still have the same mass air sensor code, apparently. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go drive the car around, and I want to watch this mass air with a scan tool and see if it's breaking down. Now, normally, I would put a scope on this car now, so when I went for a test drive, I'd be watching it with a scope and a scan tool because that's the best way to do this so I don't waste time. But what I want to do is I want to show you what's going to happen if you're the shop that's doing this job. If you were the shop doing the job, you're probably going to just be using a scan tool. So let's do it like they did and see if we can figure out what's wrong with this car, okay? Hop in, let's go for a ride. Okay, I got the scan tool up and I got the data and the car's running. Our trims are okay. The vacuum is a little low for the car, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so now I want to show you guys something that's really going to be important. So right now we have about nine PIDs selected. I'm going to add one, the TPS. We're going to go over here to graph. We're going to go to a different graph combination. We're going to go here. Now the yellow is in TP, the yellow is TP, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to not have any other data on this screen. So now the top screen is the one we're looking at, and the only thing I'm worried about is the yellow. So I'm going to open the throttle up, and now I'm going to do it real quick. One, two, three. Okay, I opened the throttle three times and I got one. I want to show you this again. One, two, three. I got one. Now the reason that this is happening, guys, is because I have too many PIDs selected. Let me show you something. I don't know any other scan tool that does this other than mine. And mine has this in here because I'm a mechanic and I understand how important this is. It says my loop read is 8 to 900 milliseconds and my single loop read speed is 82. So we're going to go out and we the way scan tools work is they get on the bus and they ask for a PID, whatever PID, like a TPS, the mass air, the coolant temp, the O2s, whatever. And once I ask, then I got to wait for reply. And then the reply comes back for the PCM and then I make a data point and I hook these data points together. Well, if I've got too many PIDs, this goes too slow to see that data. So now is what I want to show you. Go and I want to clear all, and now I just want to pick one. I want to just pick the TPS. I'm going to go back over to graphs. We're going to pick the TP here. I'm going to open it once. Now, one, two, three. 
One, two, three. Now guys, this isn't about this scan tool. This is about data acquisition and how it works. The more, the more PID you have, the slower the data rate is. And realize, you know, these buses, no matter what they tell you how fast they are, there's latency in these buses. It's just the way the bus works. So with one PID, now my loop read speed is about 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds I'm rereading the TPS. Before I read it every 100, but then I read a bunch of other PIDs and then I had to go back and reread it. And so there's a bunch of latency where we're not being able to graph those data points. That's what's happening. So this is super, super important for you guys to understand when you're looking for a problem like this. Because just off of the data that I've heard, I'm sort of thinking that the mass air sensor wire is being grounded during driving or the power of the ground, one of the wires is having a problem with this vehicle. So what I want to do now is I want to go drive it and I want to watch this this PID right here. I want to see if it falls. Again, look at how it catches every one of them. What I want to do now is I want to go change the PID. I want to use the mass air sensor and I only want the mass air sensor up. So let's go take a look and see what we got now. So yellow is the math gram weight. So it's reading it very rapidly, so we're reading only that PID, I've got good resolution. that We're reading about 4.6 grams per second, and this is a 4.3, so the gram per second weight is corrected idle in my mind. That's about what I would expect this little Chevy to do. So I think we're okay there. So now we need to go take a test drive and see if we can get this sensor to fail. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, we're out on our test drive. And so far, the math looks really good, real clean signal. And we've only got just that one PID selected, so all we've got here is just the mass air sensor. So we've got the fastest data rate, sampling rate that we can have. The car runs really well, guys. I definitely don't feel any kind of problem and that's also what Tony said. He said the car ran really good. It just sets the check engine light and he's trying to get the check engine light off because he's going to give this car to his daughter and she lives in Albuquerque and in Albuquerque we have an emission program where it's got to pass. It can't have codes in the system or it won't pass. Okay guys, we've been driving the car around for quite some time now and I don't see anything. So I'm done wasting my time. You know, I hate when I'm just stroking a car. I don't want to make love to the thing, I just want to fix it. So let's go get a scope so we can fix this car, okay? Okay guys, I got the scope connected. Let me show you how I've connected it. I've got the green is ground, red is power, and the yellow is the signal math sensor guys this math sensor looks like it's rebuilt and it's got some harness that goes to the main the connector here very interesting I got the ground at the battery negative where it belongs the ground of the scope always goes to the battery negative so now let's go get some signals okay guys I got the scope connected let's make sure our leads are connected correctly okay so channel one is a signal Channel 2 is the voltage to the sensor and channel 3 is the ground. Channel 4 isn't connected. Note that I have a red light on showing I have a connection problem, but we're only using three leads, so all of them are connected correctly. Okay, so now let's go get some data. Okay, so we're getting our data and it's correct. So I want to zoom in here. And we can see that this is a digital air mass sensor, so this frequency is going to change and the frequency is indicated of how much airflow is going into the engine. This is very normal for GM engines. 
So what we're looking for is this to break down or this to be pulled to ground when we go on our test drive. But there's something else I need to do here. Okay, so I want to go over to the scan tool. And I want the scan tool to help me find my problem. So I'm going to go to DTCs. So we've got the P0102. I want to clear that code. Now I want to start the scope reading continuously. And what's going to happen now is when the, we set a code, it's going to stop the scope. So let's go get that scope running. Let's try. Okay guys, right there. The DTC got caught. It stopped the scope. DTC got caught, so it's telling me that right when it got the DTC, so something in this area is what caused it. So I can see one thing right away. When I started the car, I can see it running. Do you see those ignition spikes up here? In that power, I can see where I have ignition and I started to fire the ignition. So let's take a cursor and put it on the first ignition strike. And let's take the next cursor and put it on where the waveform starts. Okay, so that's a that's basically almost a second of time, 977 milliseconds. That's about a second. So it's started and it's running, but there's no output from that sensor. That sensor doesn't have any output at all. Now, I think that's what's wrong, guys. So let's shut this off because it's dinging. Okay, so I think this is the problem right now, but I still want to come over here and I want to look at this waveform. So we want to look for something that might be breaking down where I lost a section here. I don't see anything breaking down there at all. So now I want to run an algorithm on it. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to process the data. I'm going to process the data. I'm going to set the crossing at 2 volts. That means that I'm going to count the edges right at 2 volts. So I'm going to count that frequency. We're going to plot it. Okay, we had a frequency and it went across and I didn't break down. So let's go ahead and load that back in there. Okay. So guys, I think the latency is because when I first started the car and I didn't have a signal. Okay, now guys, we got to start to think like engineers, okay? Because that's how I fix cars. How would you write this code if you wanted to find out? You're not going to look for airflow unless the car is running. But once the car starts to run, and how would I do that? I would look at the CKP, the crank sensor, and I'd look at the tone ring. And at a certain frequency, I would know that if I went above cranking because of the frequency. And I would say, if the frequency is greater than this, and I don't have any output, I don't have a frequency, and basically this frequency is usually somewhere about 2,000, or 2,000 hertz. See, watch this. We'll run this. Okay, so we're, we're at 2,500 hertz. So I could write a code that said if the crank was spinning faster than, and you know when it goes faster than, than cranking, when it started, and if this went to a thousand hertz, that's half, I would know I had a problem. And that would be a really safe way to write a code. So if I had, if I have less than, than 1500 or a thousand hertz, and the engine is running, I set a low code. Well, I don't have anything over here when the engine's running, so that's somewhat of a problem. Okay? The engine's running here, and I don't have any, and there's no frequency here. So the math sensor, I had power and I had ground, so the sensor should be making a frequency here, and it's not. 
and notice it's at five volts. It didn't get grounded. It's high. The sensor's just not pulling the five volt reference to ground to make this frequency here, to make these pull downs. So this is the sensor circuit failing. See, this is what's happening. The sensor's pulling this to ground. It's pulling the five volt to ground to make the frequency. And that's just not happening right now, guys. So I think the problem is, is when we when we start the car and the car sees it started, the program sees it's running and I don't have any frequency, it's going to set a code. And that would be just how I would think that this is going to work. The, the rebuilt MAF sensor is just no good. His first rebuilt one was junk, his second one rebuilt one is junk. Now I'm not going to put a rebuilt sensor on this because I know not to have problems. I'm going to put a brand new GM sensor on this so I can stop having this car come back. Well, it hasn't come back to me. But I know how not to have cars. I owned a shop for 27 years, and I learned really quick that I don't want, don't want uh, cars coming back. So let me show you something. We're going to go ahead and start this, and I'm going to give this a rev. And now we're going to run that frequency, and you're going to see that this looks like an analog waveform from a regular mass air sensor, right? So this is what the program's looking at. It's looking at the frequency, but it's looking at it as a plot more how much air is flowing. I revved it and I have more air. So that's how this is working. And so I, I've explained what I, how I think the program's working. And whenever you got a problem or a DTC, stop and start to think how you would program it in order to find a problem. Well, we know the engine's gonna have to be running to have airflow, so let's do another test here. I wanna do one more test. So I wanna go back over here, I wanna clear the code. I want to start this running again. I want to go back to my... Okay, so now I'm going to shut it off. And I'm going to turn it on. Now look at how long. I had the same latency. But I didn't set a code. Same latency, but no code. Now we're going to do it again. See how long it's running? Okay, it set the code. Because it's it started and the crank's turning fast enough and I don't have any airflow because it didn't pull it to ground. It started to pull it to ground over here, but it didn't initially pull it to ground. So I'm gonna set a code for that. Guys, this is just simple if you have a scope. If you want to make love to the car and stroke it, just go drive it around with a scan tool. If you want to fix a car fast, get a scope, because this is the way you fix cars fast and accurately. Okay, okay guys, now we know what's wrong, that we have latency here because of a scope. Let's go and see if we could have seen this with a scan tool, like the shop that was working on this, or like maybe one of us. Okay, so I have... I have the PIDs, I only have the mass air, so we're going as fast as we can. Now let's start this thing up and see what we get. Can you see that that would have caused you a DTC there? If you can see that, you're way better than me. Let's do that again. Yeah, if you can see that, that's what's causing that with a scan tool. You are really, really good. I'm not that good. I need a scope. That's why I say I take a scan tool and a scope when I go for a test drive so I don't waste my time. I mean, making money with diagnosing cars is all about not wasting your time, finding the problem fast and accurately. Okay guys, I'm back over at the shop and we had to order the sensor. The sensor came from GM, it had to come from Phoenix, so it came overnight. So now this is the GM factory sensor and this is the sensor that's failing here. We have a brand new GM sensor in, in this vehicle now, so now let's go see what the waveforms are going to do. Okay, I got the scan tool set up, guys. I cleared the code, 
and I went in and I, I said read continuously and what this feature does, this is a really innovative feature only in ATS scopes. And what this does is when I start this, the scan tool, as soon as the scan tool sees a code, it will shut my, my scope off. We can see it immediately had pulses, no big pause. And we can also see we didn't set a code. See how it had this cycle right away? No DT was set. We're going to come over and we're going to zoom in here. We can see as soon as the key hit, we had, we had pull down. That sensor is pulling this to ground. So the PCM sends 5 volts out and the sensor is pulling it to ground. Okay? So that's how this is in operation. But we can clearly see that this is not doing what the other one was doing. Okay guys, was that just a fun little diagnosis or what? I really enjoyed working on this car. You know, most of the time I'm working on these cars that have been to every shop, 10, 15 shops and dealerships, and they cannot be fixed. You know, they're going to the grave. They're rest in peace cars. And I resurrect these cars by doing a proper diagnosis. But this car remind me, reminded me of when I had my shop for 27 years. This was a daily kind of problem that I diagnosed at my shop. So it was just fun to remember how just a base, how fun a basic problem is to diagnose. But you know, as basic as this problem is, it could be really difficult to diagnose this car if you didn't have some of these advanced features. Can you believe that scan tool that shuts a scope off for you? So you can actually see where the DTC sets, so you can go back and look to see what failed and then reason how it failed? I mean, ATS is the next level in diagnostics, guys. Let ATS get you to where you need to be using this type of equipment. Start using scopes and you too will be successful diagnosing vehicles in your shop.